Ireland, more like a Frenchland. Oh, and look at our beautiful subjects over here. And we're the HRE Emperor and the Papal Controller. Oh my lord, why is France so overpowered? Seriously, Paradox, why is France so overpowered? If we get 10,000 likes, I'll be doing the second part where we form the Holy Roman Empire as the French and basically conquer most of Europe in the process. And don't forget to use my link below to get E4 plus all DLCs except origins for just $20. Best part also is that you can adjust where your money goes so you choose how you want to spend it. There's only a few days remaining so take advantage of this otherwise you're gonna have to pay 400 plus dollars for all the DLCs without the discount. France pretty much is the strongest nation in EU4 at the start of the game but with the recent update they got some massive indirect buffs via the lands that they're gonna be taking in the first few years. So today we'll show you how overpowered they are and how much they can play wide first thing we're gonna do obviously is we're gonna get our rivals Burgundy England and the Austrians are the best first three rivals we also start with five vassals you can either set them up to a uh, supportive or to siege down enemy provinces your choice you also start with the uh, French strong duchies which offers one extra diplo relations compared to the regular duchies so next up we're gonna be summoning the diet and we're gonna go for whichever agenda best suits us we also will be giving the plus one mana privileges for all three of the estates and we're going to be seizing the crownlands afterwards we cannot sell titles anymore because you need to have 10 percent crownlands to sell titles and listen very carefully to what i'm telling you mana points is way more important than money and if you really need the money you can just get the five one percent burger loans there you go we started with 700 ducats and we only have 0.5 interest which is close to nothing and we can just pay this money off after the first first war with the English. So the bottom line is don't sell titles, get the plus one mana privileges from the beginning because this way you get a lot more benefits in the long run instead of just wasting it on just cash. Don't forget to also give out the supremacy over the ground for the uh, nobility, the religious diplomats for the clergy, as well as the private trade fleets and the patronage of the arts for the uh, bourgeoisie. We're going to give the minus 25 advisor cost reduction privileges after we got the one stability so keep that in mind as well and make sure you get either discipline or morale of armies advisor diplo reputation or trade efficiency for uh, the uh, diplo advisor and production efficiency for the uh, admin we also start with two absolutely chad generals the one with the three siege in the north since we want to quickly take the fort in cayenne and the other guy assign him in the south here for the secondary army we will also be recruiting the grand company in the south to use both of these armies to take out the uh, uh, Aquitanian lands that the English have first. Make sure to also delete the fort in Huat Poitou and uh, Chartres. Both of these are absolutely useless as they are grasslands forts. And even with plus 100 liberty desire from subject development, we still have loyal subjects, so you really should not struggle with your subjects. One more thing we're going to do is we're going to cancel the alliance with the nation of Provence and we're going to get an alliance with the nation of uh, Scotland, Dariago. Now we also have one more diplo relation slot so we can get a second ally and this second ally can either be Castile, Bohemia or one of the Italian minor nations here. I personally prefer Castile as Castile can help out in the wars against Aragon and Portugal perhaps since Aragon is on our target list obviously as well as Bohemia we can get as an ally a little bit later after the English war since Bohemia can help out against the Austrians and by getting an alliance with Bohemia we prevent the Austrians from taking the PU over Bohemia which in turn means a weaker Austria. So the main game plan now is essentially to uh, attack the English on the 11th of December. We're not going to wait for the event of Maine to trigger because if it does trigger then we cannot get all of our cores back with uh, the 25% aggressive expansion CB. We would take these for a lot more aggressive expansion and it's not worth taking uh, English lands first. You have cores over all of these lands here so you instantly get the benefits from having these lands. And this is like a hundred development. Take into account there's two ways of doing this. The first one we just attack and we get the war score from uh, their ally Portugal and from the English lands in the mainland. Second option we get alliance and we get military access with the Scots. We position our units in Scotland and then we use the Scottish to invade the mainland of the English in the British Isles. I personally prefer to just get my war score from Portugal. It's a lot faster and easier but it's your choice if you want to also ferry your troops over to Scotland. Keep in mind that you need to have 
both an alliance and military access. If you don't have the alliance, then they're gonna get black flagged when you attack the English. One more thing I recommend you do is get royal marriage with all of your subjects. Getting this royal marriage means you get lowered liberty desire by another 5% with each of these subjects. And the reason we cancel the alliance with Provence is because likely they will get excommunicated by the Pope. They almost always rival the Pope and if they do get excommunicated, it's gonna be cheaper to take Provence lands adjacent to us, which is quite a few provinces. And it is the 11th of December. Let's start our war. Set the war target in Cayenne. We can call the Scots in if we want, but if you do call the Scots in, remember that the English will easily take the Scottish out. And what that means is that you're gonna lose war score if you don't have troops positioned in Scotland. So I'm not calling them in in my case here. So let's just start our war ski. So rush for Cayenne, rush for the province in the south as well. We basically have two or three times more troops than the English, so it's not going to be any sort of an issue. Whilst we're doing this, we're also going to get claims on Brittany, Provence, as well as the nation of Aragon, because these will be our main targets after we finish the war with the English. You can also get some more PP by insulting or scornfully insulting your rivals, and bargoing them as well. Oh wow, that is a really dumb move right there, England. Did he just attack me in the fort here? And whenever they attack me like that, it also gives me more war scores, so obviously it makes me win the war a lot faster. 311 days and we got Laborde. What? What is this? Owned by Armagnac. Oh right, Armagnac's got a core in this. No, sorry Armagnac. We also have a core, so this is gonna be our land. Let's start rushing for the Portuguese lands now. Oh, excommunicado against the uh, nation of Savoie. Interesting. So if we attack Savoy, we get less aggressive extension for these two provinces. And Austria's not joining in because they rivaled Savoy and they don't like them. This is, would be a super easy war. Let's see, if we finish the English war fast, maybe we can use the excommunication war and get these two provinces from Savoy. And Cayenne has just fallen. Let's use these troops to go into the south now. Oh, what? That was fast. They uh, they lost the excommunication now, really? I guess they just uh, paid indulgence, didn't they? Well, what do we have here, everybody? It's the army of Ireland. Oh, where did the army of Ireland go? Nobody knows. Kind of feels Pepega, doesn't it? Like uh, the English are essentially sending Irish people to their death so their own boys don't die, huh? Very sneaky English mon. Let's also stack wipe them in the province of uh, Alersu. Oui, oui. Seems like a much larger English army is here. In charge of this is John Talbot, famous English general. And uh, oh my god, they got pretty decent rolls. Still, I won and I'm gonna stack wipe their entire army. Daria go. Arrivederci, Johnny boy. I guess you could say that uh, Talbot me got Talbooted. <laughs> <laughs> fine, it's not funny, okay? Fine. Let's see how many troops they got left now. 4,000 troops. That's it. Just this this small division over here. Before we do any peace deal, though, I gotta kill off the rest of the Portuguese army because they are actually unseaging some of their land, so I'm losing some of my war score. And I still have the one province in uh, Ceuta, which is a fort, so that's a lot of extra war score, too. Time for the French invasion. As uh, they used to say in uh, Stronghold Crusaders, Maulai. Alright, granted, Maulai was like the thing that the Arabs were saying, but whatever, okay? I'm still gonna say Maolai, there's nothing you can do to stop me from saying it, right? We can get up to 860 ducats, I can get 619. I want all of the ducats first. Ah, uh, yeah, English scumbags. Ha! You got a zero roll, England. You got a freaking- you got zeroed. You got zeroed. That's a new term. I'm inventing it right now. It exists, okay? And we also got 83% war score, so that means we really can take all money we want now. Well, we can get 791. That's fine. It's better than nothing, I guess. Actually, I'm gonna take Calais, so I'm gonna take a little bit less money as a consequence. We got all the English lands in um, Europe, mainland Europe at least. And we also got the province of the Pale, so we can start munching into the Irish lands before the English do. So next up, obviously, we're gonna be going ahead and we're gonna make full states out of these provinces that we just took. Delete the fort in Cayenne, obviously, and the one in Calais. And we do have to core up uh, Calais and uh, the Pale. Make sure you lower the war exhaustion before you do anything of the sorts, however. And also, I forgot to get my one stability. We can also get the Reconquest of Gascony, Reconquest of Normandy. Reconquest of Normandy actually gives us 5% crownlands, and we got another 4.9% crownlands from uh, taking all of the English land. So we ended up with 11% crown. It hasn't even been five years yet, guys, to put that into perspective. 
Oh, actually, we can do 100 years war also. Nice. We get one stability from that. So I guess I should not have wasted my admin points in that case. Oh, well, it's fine. Two stability is good with me. Now it's time to get claims on the various Irish nations. And since we're at it, we're also going to be canceling the alliance with the Scots. It was very much so temporary. Also, by canceling this alliance, it's basically free real estate when we expand into the Scottish lands. Ooh la la, Naples just became independent. That means uh, we're going to get an event that's going to give us a pew over the Neapolitans eventually. It also means that Aragon's really, really weak as schnitzel now. So I'm going to be attacking them. We're going to call in Castile, promise them land that obviously we will not deliver. And we're only doing this, I mean, we're only calling in uh, Castile because Castile allied Brittany and we can attack Brittany also at the same time now without having to worry about Castile joining in the war on the side of Brittany. I know this is something that a lot of you struggle with. The, this XY nation ally this big guy what am I gonna do this is one of the things you can do there's other things as well you can do that's what makes you for such an amazing game the fact that there's always a lot of options for any sort of situation it's been one month so let's go with the uh, war against Brittany nice try Brittany trying to run away from my troopios I'm gonna have to go ahead and uh, stack wipe you sir it's for your own good okay and would you look at that we're gonna be the first nation to get military tech a uh, five oh, sorry military tech four not five and I just realized I forgot to wait until 49 so I can see seize another 5% crown lens. I cannot seize it if I'm at war. And I literally was thinking, I gotta wait till 49 before I declare war. I gotta wait. And then I declared without waiting, because I have the memory of a hummingbird. I just had a massive revelation. Doesn't John Bureau mean John Butter? This dude's name is Butter? And I thought my name's bad, you know? Die, ya Aragonese scumbags. Yep, they died. They definitely died. <laughs> oh, they got a lot more troops coming in. Uh, I'm gonna have to get out of that uh, fort, sir. Thank Thank you very much. Looks like we're gonna be the first at the uh, Diplotech as well. So that means we already have eight innovativeness from the start. Time for yet another massive battalia here. We outnumbered them so much to uh, so much, right? We literally got double the amount of troops. They got some good rolls, but we're still gonna win this because, you know, numbers still win battles at the end of the day. That's why uh, manpower is the most insane thing in EU4. Took us 666 days to get the uh, Fort in Finisterre. If that that's not a special number, I don't know what is. I am gonna basically fully annex them. I'm not making them my vassal and here is why. Making them a French vassal is 51 aggressive expansion, whilst uh, fully annexing them is 50 aggressive expansion. So obviously, why would I waste my time with another vassal in here? Not much of a coalition either, just uh, Burgundy and England. And the best part is we can concentrate for 15 development, which makes it a lot cheaper to core these lands afterwards. And and we can also do the mission subjugate a Brito, which gives us a little bit of uh, diplo power. Don't forget to destroy the castle in Finisterre, another extremely useless castle. We have occupied everything we can occupy from Aragon. Sadly, I cannot get onto the islands themselves. And if I want to get any Sicilian lands, I have to take the fort in Messina. Can I get there because I don't have naval supremacy? So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take Malta. I don't need naval supremacy or any fort in order to take Malta. And I'll take uh, also Sardinia the uh, Balearic Islands, as well as the province of uh, Rousillon. I'm gonna take some money also, as much as I can take from them. Let's go with the Pisus dealers. Now, we can also prevent the Castilians from uh, unallying us by using our curried favors, so we can increase our trust with them. There you go. Trade favors for trust. We can do this twice. Now that we have Rousillon, we can delete the fort in uh, Narbonne, because the Rousillon fort is a hill fort, and it essentially is a bottleneck between the Iberian lands and the uh, French lands. We were not lucky with the uh, nation of Provence. They still have not gotten excommunicado. So I'm going to change my tactic accordingly. Also, by getting all of these islands, if you are doing the bleak blue blob achievement, well, you're going to get very close to getting that achievement as it is. But if you're not doing that, well, then it's also great to get these lands because it offers access to the African lands up next, which is basically super easy expansion. We can also attack Naples after we get some claims on them and then from Naples, Naples work our way into the Balkans. But before all that, of course, we're gonna bring an army over here. We got some claims on the adjacent countries and we're gonna attack and basically fully annex all of Ireland now. Excuse me, sir, what time is it? Is it to attack the Irish nations? Yes, yes, it is. Let's go first with uh, the nation of uh, Clan Ricard and whatever else this nation is called. I'm actually not sure if that is Clan Ricard. Oh no, our beloved Alida just died. Oh 
no, no, no. Actually, this guy is a little bit better. But we have a pretty trashy heir, so we're gonna have to disinherit him. One month has passed, we can attack our second Irish nation. The first phase of Irish conquest is done. We got most of the Irish land. Before I declare on the rest of them, I actually have to uh, seize the crown land. So I gotta kill off some of the rebels I got on the island of Sardinia. One more reason why I want it to be at peace is because it's time to start annexing our vassals. We're gonna annex Armagnac and Orléans first, since these two are the biggest vassals that we have and by annexing them the other ones are going to be super loyal i mean it's not an issue anyway all of them are basically zero liberty desire i also strongly encourage that you get the nobility integration policy privilege which means that you do not get the minus three diplo reputation debuff after you've integrated these nations and it makes it a little bit faster to integrate them you're going to get some liberty desire in them so keep that in mind make sure you are capable of keeping them loyal once you've given out this privilege and now we can also get that sweet juicy alliance with the bohemians that we can use against the austrians after we finish with the british isles hold up a second looks like epirus still is alive and guess what boys they're willing to be diplo vassalized by me so i'm actually gonna diplo vassalize epirus uh excuse me knights you want no 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 get out of here i'm not giving you malta 29th of march and now we can do the diplo annexation or oh, sorry diplo vassalization for epirus which means after we annex them we release Byzantium and kill off the Ottomans. That's also in pretty good timing as well since by that point we should be finished with this area here. We also sold and seized back some crown loans which gave us some more money which means we can pay off the old 1% loans now and if we need to we can take a new much bigger 1% loans since our loans are double what they used to be at the start of the game. Next war is against Ulster and their allies which uh, is essentially the war for consolidating our lands in Ireland. Think we just need one more war and we have all the Irish miners after. Let's go with the big boy battle over here. Time to kill off the resistance. It's a little bit ironic that uh, it's the French, not the English, that are taking over Ireland. But still, it is somebody taking over Ireland, sadly. Looks like we can get Tech 5 for uh, military. That's pretty good. I don't mind spending a little bit of uh, extra military points so I get some more innovativeness. Remember how I was also talking about some buffs at the start of this session well the one of the buffs that i'm talking about is the forts of malta which offers minus 15 war score versus other religions so once we read this over to max level it's gonna be super easy and fast to conquer all of the african lands and basically everything else that's uh, not catholic which makes blob land over here a lot blobbier also want to mention that getting the papal legate whenever you got the uh papal influence is massive since it means you can integrate your vassals a lot faster. We managed to take all the lands in Ireland, but before we piece them out, we're gonna attack the rest of the Irish free nations here, basically uh, Thomond and uh, Desmond. Scotland became the first nation to join in a coalition against me, so obviously I'm gonna attack them for their insolence. How dare you join in a coalition against me? I'm such a nice guy. Why would you ever do this, Scotland? Took a few extra days than I was expecting, but we got this uh, last vestige of uh, free Irish loans and coalition wise nobody in that coalition that is important we've taken the famous dumb fries the original fries I'm just kidding, I know it's called Dumfries. I remember last time I make this joke, everyone in chat be like, Oh, Ludi, it's Dumfries, bro, it's not Dumfry. We got 99% war score, so we don't need to fight their army. I'm gonna take the three southern provinces to essentially have a nice sweet border with the English for the next war against them. And I'm also getting trade power, war reparations, all that juicy stuff in there. Coalition-wise, not many important nations. Austria and uh, Burgundy would be important out of all of those guys there but we'll deal with them when the time comes let's go ahead and also uh, concentrate on these lands before we core them up and we can also adopt la renaissance now since it has spread to a lot of our provinces noise remember those uh, burger loans i was talking about well we need them now so we're gonna get them again and this time it's a thousand six hundred ducats with only 1.3 ducats interest which is insane we're gonna use this to recruit the company so we can get rid of the uh rebels that we have in mallorca and then we're 
we're gonna bring the free company back to the mainland of France. We did that because our truce is over with the English, so the majority of our main army is actually gonna be attacking the English now before they join in a coalition against us, of course. Cole and Castile also, so they break off their alliance with the Portuguese. Hey, look at that, boys. We got the last jousting tournament also, which increases our morale of armies, amongst other things. I just realized this, but this actually sounds like Elfish. Hold on a second. Did Tolkien get his Elfish names and the Elfish language from the Irish people? So then if the Irish are the Elves, then I guess uh, this is the end of the Elves. Now they're the uh, Frelfs. Get it? French Elves? Frelfs? Oh my god, I'm really not funny. I feel like I'm chasing a mouse, so I guess technically I'm the French cat here. They have lost all of their armies, so we're gonna peace out the Portugal first. All the money and war reparations is okay for me, and now we can peace out the English. We're only gonna be taking three provinces in this first initial war against the Brits. We're also getting the uh, trade power and all that schnapps. There's a couple of reasons for this. First off, we're not getting much of a coalition, almost nobody, and second off, we're gonna release least Northumberland and Wales, which in turn means we can uh, feed them back the cores after we uh, attack the English again. So look at all the juicy cores that we have now in uh, the northern parts and in the Welsh parts. Alternatively, you could also just take uh, Carmenthen, which is less development, so less aggressive expansion. We can get our first idea group, and of course, we're going to go for quantity ideas. We're also going to start transferring our units back to the mainland now. Going to keep just a small contingent to keep uh, out the rebels from Ireland and very important guys lower the autonomy and all of your provinces this is gonna massively boost your economy as well as bolster your manpower and your land force limit we now can get 61 land force limit that means 61 regiments before I lowered the autonomy it was 47 so we gained a lot of extra schnitzel that being said we also have a small little bit of a coalition and we're gonna chill for a while until the coalition goes away at least we've had had a few years in which we basically centralized our country we've integrated our vassals here and guess what we are able to diplomatically vassalize Serbia but not only Serbia we can also diplo vassalize Genoa which became an OPM and by using both Serbia and Genoa's cores we can take a massive chunk out of the Ottomans plus because we integrated Epirus we can also release the nation of Byzantium from Arta and with Byzantium Serbia and Genoa we can take all of the Balkans in just a couple of wars for basically no aggressive expansion. We're also in the process of getting relations with the HRE electors, so we will likely become the HRE Emperor after our Balkan adventure. So let's go ahead and uh, transfer some of our units over to the Balkans so we can start a war against the Ottomans. Oh wow, for real, my uh, king just died, seriously. And I got the 124! I forget to disinherit! Oh my god, I completely forgot to disinherit this guy. Uh, horrible. Horrible. I mean, at least on the bright side, we also can now get the uh, Vassalan here. And the best part is that we also can use them in a war against the Milanese to get their cores back from Milan. Or, actually, I just forgot about the fact that we also have the Restoration of Union CB against Milan. Holy schnapps! I completely forgot about this because the Shadow Kingdom triggered Milan is not a part of the HRE. So it would be an absolute nine head move to go for Milan on now oh man you know what i'm gonna have to let the ottomans wait for a little while this kind of takes a little bit of precedent in the grand scheme of things here because i don't want the cb to expire troops are in position let's go with the war restoration of union we can call in bohemia we're gonna cobalagerate uh, provence as well maybe we can take a few provinces from them in the process oh what dude we got to be the emperor of the hre no freaking way man oh my god we became the emperor i'm assuming happened to Austria here? Yes. Yes, they died without an heir. That's why we became the emperor of the uh, HRE. This is insane, dude. Oh my god. France is so insanely powerful. Now that we're the emperor also, it's gonna be even better, boyos. And uh, just so you think nothing dodgy happened, you'll find the save on my Discord. I'm making this available to anybody. All you gotta do is just join my Discord. That's pretty much it. Now that we're also the emperor, we skyrocketed our max manpower 
to 144,000, guys. That is just ridiculous, man. And we have the first reform done. So I guess we could technically continue down this line to get the rest of the reforms. You know what? I'm also going to try and uh, hold the Emperor ship. So let's improve relations with the uh, Saxonian here. We got enough war score now. So we're going to get our PU over the nation of uh, Milan. As well as we're going to get one province from uh, Provence via the Milanese deal. So this way we don't get any unjustified demand extra cost as well as uh, less aggressive expansion which means we actually only have a few couple of nations in a potential coalition against us. Now it's time to improve relations with Milan because remember if your PU member has below zero relations with you when your king dies you lose the union. Doesn't matter what liberty desire they have what matters is that you have the good relations because I know a lot of you have been asking in the comments how come you lost particular personal unions and so on. Also we can do our second reform since we are the greatest HRE emperor and with the third reform we can start adding nations to the HRE and as such doing pretty much all the other reforms ridiculously fast. Oh and I also can now join the empire because you know I was not technically a part of the empire before even though I was the emperor now I fully am an integral part of the holiest Romanist but not really empire. Lol we also got an agenda to get these two provinces is from uh, Savoie so uh, you know what let's do it man we can we can definitely declare the war against the Ottomans after this war hey we got an imperial incident guys the Pope wants to become a part of the HRE apparently I'm gonna let him join that would really be good for us I think there's even an achievement uh, having the Pope as a part of the HRE and one of the electors we don't really want to get stuck in this war for too long we have enough war score to piece these boyos out so uh, let's do it now we're taking the two provinces we need for the mission which gives us some extra admin points. Noise kind of feels like everything is helping out the Ottomans because we just finished our truce with the English. So we're going to prioritize this before the war with the Ottomans again. Obviously, this is much more important since we want to get our cores back for our vassalin. And hey, look at that. The Pope just joined the Empire. Nice So That also means we got some more Imperial authority making our way towards that sweet third reform, y'all. Enough of the war with the English. Let's go ahead and uh, get him out of here. Because, like I said, my main goal is taking out the uh, Ottomans, and that's exactly what I'm going to be going for here. Also, because we took all of this stuff, we can also start integrating both Wales and Northumberland, for that matter. With these two vassals out of the way, we essentially just need to worry about integrating the Balkan vassals. So, uh, let's start bringing our troops over to the Balkans first. Plans definitely have changed. I initially wanted to focus mainly on England, but considering my current situation, it's much more profitable focusing on the Balkans. I'm also trying my luck at becoming the uh, Korea controller. I have been trying actually since the start of the game, but uh, so far it was Burgundy and now Aragon who got it. I did not get it just yet. Have to say that it seems like a little bit of an overkill having that many units stacked in the south there, but it is necessary. We got to take down the Autobroskis. Tirhala is our war target since it's right next to us. We can even call in uh, the Mamluks and Castile. Don't think I need them, but uh, might as well. Why not? Let's have an easy time in this war. We also want to take these fast, so we're going to use a little bit of barraging and assaulting around the places here. Is the AI actually having a stroke or something? They're like, keep on attacking and retreating from this province. It's a massive Pepega moment. Hey, finally the Castilians decided to help us out. We're getting our asses kicked by the Ottomans because they got way better unit pips. But we have a lot more manpower than them, and they basically have no more manpower left. So no matter how many battles they win, we're still going to win the war because Quan Quantity matters way too much in EU4. Oh, look at that, boys. The Ottomans have started hiring mercenaries now. They're getting desperate, everyone. At least whilst we're taking care of the Ottoman army, the Mamluks are basically sieging down and destroying all of Anatolia. Oh, what the schnapps, Mamluks. I was literally just talking about how you're such an amazing vassal, I mean ally, and now you just peaced out. For real, dude, I'm getting 2,000 manpower per month. That's more than I'm even losing from attrition. And Castile peace out also literally they didn't fight a single battle Castile was here avoiding units not a single freaking engagement you suck Castile I'm gonna eat your lands after this war second to last Ottoman army is about to get wrecked also and the thing I hate the most is the fact that the Ottomans took back Selenik when it was at 7% took back Constantinople at 7% and look at this now it's 57 when I'm taking it back I'm gonna kill you Greek bastards technically these are Greek traders right because you know 
they're fighting for the Ottomans now. And of course, why not go up to 71%, bro? We took back Tirhala, which means that we got some war score now. Dude, are you kidding me? They literally just got here. The first tick went up to 14% and the fort got broke. What the frack, dude? 31 days they took pe Bro, come on. Meanwhile, Constantinople going up to 71%. Well, you know what? Since they are in France, I'm gonna be carpet sieging everything here in that case. I swear, every single siege that I have goes up to 70 something percent. Meanwhile, the Ottomans take shit in 30 days, man. All right, we're taking back everything into France. So uh, we're getting a lot of war score because we have essentially all of the Balkans now. Whoa, hold on a second here. We have inherited Burgundy. Hell yeah, boys. Of course, like it was close to 100% chance that we're going to inherit Burgundy because we are both the Emperor of the HRE and the second option that they have, which is to go either France or the Emperor. Well, technically it's like 80 because they also have the option of going for their strongest ally. Let's make sure we kill off their pretender rebels and of course we'll keep the union with burgundy oh no it might lead to a war with france oh no whatever will france do let's get a little bit more war score from killing off the remainder of the ottoman army arrivederci otomanski i did want to go for 100 percent war score but that would mean that i have to go into anatolia and i'm not in the mood for that so i'm just gonna piece him out for 90 war score can i get some money as well no money i'm gonna basically give back all the cores to uh, my uh, serbian and my Genoese vassals. This way I can start integrating both of them right now actually and uh, at the same time in the next war we're gonna take the Bulgarian course too because I'm gonna release Bulgaria from the province of Vidin. Skipped an extra two years by just concentrating. Not bad. We also can do the third reform which means that now it's on boys. Now it is on. We can start expanding the empire and also let's invest a little bit more. Maybe maybe we'll come the Korea controller. We got a 26% chance of getting it. Oh my lord, look at that juicy expand empire, CB. Mantua, Bologna, oh yes, please. Wait, what? I can diplo vassalize them? Oh my freaking god, I am so ridiculously overpowered. Let's see how many nations I can actually diplo vassalize. Offer vassalization. Mantua, everybody that's basically an OPM, I can essentially diplo vassalize here. Even Crimea, what? Oh my god, I can vassalize Crimea. They're an OPM. Oh my god, that's the juiciest opium ever yes please i want to vassalize you thank you very much i'm gonna have to improve relations beforehand though and in case you were wondering i did go diplomatic ideas as my second idea set it's not quantity eco for the first time in a million years i know i know but as the emperor of the hre it's obviously a lot better to go diplo ideas Oh, we might have a war with France, guys. Hey, would you look at that, boys? We're now also the papal controller. So we're the emperor of the HRE, the papal controller, and literally the most overpowered nation in this game right now. It is basically guaranteed that I'm going to become the next emperor, which is why I'm actually going to abdicate. I'm doing this essentially because the other guy is horrible and I need the mana points. This guy has way more mana points. Now, no one's voting for us because we do not have an heir, so we got to keep that in mind and we need to get an heir first and foremost we're also going to be expanding into england scotland the coalition completely dissipated by the way and once the truce is over with the ottomans we'll take the rest of the balkans for our two beloved vassals here and most importantly we're going to get this imperial authority and we're going to be renovating the empire under the french crown not the usual habsburg crown so if you want to see all of that i would love to do a second part for this run since i'm really having a lot of fun so let's get 10,000 likes and the reason i'm asking for so many likes is because i have already a lot of part twos to do and the one that reaches 10,000 likes first is the one that i know people enjoyed the most so i will be prioritizing those videos first and until the next time check out this awesome denmark video and i want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters i really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support